I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is January 21st, and this is a Manipulative Monday. Okay, first of all, what is a manipulative? So manipulative is something used in the classroom that you can feel or touch, that you can feel, that you can touch. Manipulative, my hands, manos. Uh, and the idea is it's something you can use in your classroom to help teach a concept, something that you can manipulate. Um, so what's up with these Manipulative Mondays that we do? So we homeschool, for those who may not be aware, we homeschool. We got a 14-year-old and 10-year-old that we homeschool. And so as a result of that, we've incorporated 3D printing into our homeschool. And part of that, we've been trying to find manipulatives or create manipulatives on the 3D print to help in our own homeschool and also to help in other people's homeschool and actually in a regular school tool. You can use this for regular school, right? Um, so that's why we're doing these videos. And part of it is... So far, and it may continue for the next year, is this is mostly on me. Mostly, I'm trying to discover or create designs of my own based on these challenges. But eventually, if I can convince enough people or get enough homeschoolers out there to get 3D printers, I would really like to have other people take up this challenge and create some other manipulatives because we desperately need them. I mean, the school system needs them, homeschoolers need them, and also it's a big attraction to try to convince homeschoolers to get 3D printers if there's a lot of manipulatives they can print out and help in their own classroom. But anyway... On with this subject. So, uh, usually when I'm doing these, I have my wife next to me. And so my wife uh, is always trying to come up with a challenge or something she needs, uh, like last time was DNA. Uh, but in this case, I'm challenging myself. So, uh, my wife does most of the work, 80-90% of the class material she designs and does for our homeschooling. I shouldn't say design. She's got a curriculum she buys. She tweaks it. And so, 80-90% of their education is maintained and controlled by my wife. Uh, I do the last little 10 or 20%, I call them dad classes, where I kind of do what I want. I kind of add to the curriculum. Like one time I spent two weeks teaching them how to tie knots. Uh, but currently, what I'm doing is I'm teaching them electronics, which has <laughs> turned out to be a lot of fun. So it's a, I'm going to be doing it for the next two or three or four months. And we're going bit by bit by bit. And we are, where's my book? Ah, not to open up. We are using this book. Should have had this open before, but let me go open it now. I am using this book, Make Electronics Learning Through Discovery. It's a really good book, and I'm going through it bit by bit and creating lesson plans every week to go through, through with my kids. And a lesson plan that's coming up here in a few weeks is going to involve making a lemon battery. And so here is a copy of one of the pages, I think it's page 35, of making a lemon battery. And so it was ridiculous. I was looking at this going, okay, cool. I can make a lemon battery and teach my kids some voltage and different things. Uh, and I looked down, I was like, oh, I can use lemon juice. And I've never made a lemon battery. So this will be a first time experience. And I saw the little container down there. They have them like, oh, perfect. Let me see if I can go find something like that. Um, but I need something, you know, watertight between so that I'm not going to have water, the lemon flowing back and forth. And so I was trying to find something. And then I realized, oh, hey, stupid guy. You have a 3D printer. You can make your own. So I was like, cool. So I have been going through the process. I'm not there yet of making a design for this. That's going to be really nice for the classroom and for other people's classrooms. So the challenge to me is to create a lemon battery holder. So that's the challenge this week. Create a lemon battery holder that you can 3D print out that's going to help people use lemon juice to make a lemon battery. Okay, I've got something done, and it took a lot of research and some iteration, but it was a lot of fun getting all that done. So, uh, for those who may want this themselves, this happens to be thing 3378992, and it's a fun thing of ours now. Uh, but I want to go over a little bit of research I had to do, and um, some of the iterations I did real quick. So, some of the research I had to do, right now, I've been doing some experiments with threading, and most of that involves printing out the nut and the thread itself and having them connect to each other. And I'm going to do a video on that next couple of weeks, next month, roughly. Uh, but this took a side journey where I, um, I, I, the, the idea that I had with this was uh, you need a, you know, a copper piece and people usually use pennies. They're really readily available, easy to do. So I said, okay, we'll use a penny um, or they use zinc coated nails or other things that are zinc coated. And so I thought, well, zinc coated nails, I can go find that. But um, since I'm using lemon juice, I don't need to really pierce a lemon. I can just stick something in there. And I thought, well, this would be good for a classroom. And handing out a bunch of nails might not be the greatest idea. So I went to Home Depot, poked around, and finally found, um, see if I can show this. So here are some 
some bolts I found that are zinc covered. So these are Everbuilt round head combo, quarter inch by 20 uh, by one inch. And you can see down here it says zinc. And so I bought a pack of 50 of them. And so there's a number on there, 254002. Um, so I thought, hey, what if I can use a zinc bolt? And um, then it's easier for the classroom because no one's going to hurt themselves with this. But then I could put a thread in the bottom of what I'm going to create, and you could thread it in and put it in there, and it just stays in very nicely. Um, so I thought, cool, that'll work, I think, was my thought process. So I bought a whole bag, of, you know, a whole box of these to see what I could do and what, see if I could experiment with them. So I did, got them home, did a little quick twist, test. Turned out they work, so hooray. Um, but now I've got a bolt, and it's an English bolt, you know, a quarter inch. And so I went, okay, uh, in in... I'm not going to go over the Fusion 360 because I plan on doing that in another video. But in Fusion 360, you can take a cylinder and you can apply a thread to it. And so if you have a quarter inch cylinder, you apply that thread to it. And then all of a sudden a bunch of choices come up. And so you have to say, you know, to, you have to say there's a, I'm going to forget it right now, but there's a button that says, hey, just render this. So actually render the thread. But when it comes to threads, um, there goes somebody nearby. When it comes to threads, it's not just a matter of how big is your bolt and how many threads per inch is there. There's a lot more to it. Um, I'm, I'm My undergraduate degree is in mechanical engineering, so I had to go study a lot of this back in the day. It's not fresh in my mind, but there's a lot of little key factors in here. So if you look, if you go in there, and I'll do a video soon, uh, there's all these choices. So it, it, it luckily, it filters things out. So you apply it to a quarter inch and say, oh, here's all the quarter inch choices. Do you want this standard, this standard, this standard? And there might be little subcategories too, because uh, how, you might use the word sloppy, how tight or how sloppy do you want this to be? And so when I did this, I had to go do some research on that particular one. And one thing I found was, uh, here's a couple of sites, the engineering toolbox, and I'll put a link to that. And then here's another one. I found this PDF here, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, and so it was going through some of the standards and I had to go, where are you? Class A, I think it's Class A. Yep. So I'm not going to say it right. I'll do it better in my next video. But there's different classes for tightness and looseness, and I believe this was like a one A. I had I went and made a thread, didn't work. It was too tight, and so I went back and found oh there's an option for I think it was one A, which is a more loose loose thread, and that worked. So. You, you need to do a little research and look these things up. You can't just throw them on there and expect them to work, So, which is what I did. But that's also nice because you can iterate. You can do a little test, find out you failed like I did, and then iterate. So I... Do I have my bad example? Oh, there it is. Okay, so here, here, let me go through my example. So I went through at least nine different iterations. And so what I did at first, I made this little guy. So he's a little cup, so you can put that in there. And I said, okay, I'll put a thread in there. And I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. Ah, oh, there we go. And then the idea was you could thread this in there and it would stay. But it's not threading in because it's just too tight. So I went, oh, crud. There's my first failure. Uh, and the next thing I went is I said, okay, let me not burn a lot of time getting this thread done. And so I made a tiny little guy. It doesn't need to be big. And put that thread in there. Looked up and put this one A in there. And lo and behold, it worked. So cool. So I got a thread that was going to work. And then just to test my own curiosity, I made this one with a much longer thread uh, just to see if I could actually, oh boy, I got that in there tight, to see if I could thread it in all the way. Oh man, now I don't have my, put it in there tight. To see if it, uh, I was worried that, it, yeah, you could thread a little bit, but a long ways it probably might not work so well. But a long ways worked just fine. So I did have my thread the way it needed to be. Life was good. And then I decided for multiple reasons to put two in there. Oof. I need better lighting, huh? Let's see. So I put two in there because there's experiments you can do with having multiples in there to teach kids about voltage. And I think, well, I might be wrong on this, to teach about voltage and, and uh Amperage, how much amperage? I think if you do more, you might be able to get more amperage through. I'm not sure on that. My brain, not, I don't make many, many lemon batteries. But I did a test. These both worked. Uh, so. I also did a test. Um, I figured it wasn't thick enough. The walls weren't thick enough, and I worried 
that some little kid trying to use this in a classroom and trying to have these last for years eventually would break. So I went, ah, thicker walls. I made thicker walls. And the next thing I did is after I got those figured out, I said, okay, I need to put pennies in there, but I want to put them in there so they just kind of naturally hold. And so I came with this idea. See how well that works. So it's a little thin piece, and so you can stick pennies behind it and a hole behind it. And I put some uh, holes in there so that the lemon juice could flow through it and it could touch more of it. So I figured that was a good idea. The only problem with this idea, though, is if I, I had this idea of putting two, uh, two zinc bolts and two pin, copper pennies. But if we do that, it wrote, they just move freely. And then they could touch each other, and that thought experiment uh, doesn't work. You want the pennies not to touch each other, uh, at least with I'm trying to think that through. Uh, anyway, so then I went, oh, okay. Uh, and then the other, uh, other problem is I want these to stack. And so without the penny thing, they stack just fine. Not a problem. But now that I got this thing in here that's so high up, and I didn't think about that. So now I try to stack it. Can't stack it because it's hitting that. And I said, oh, crud, let me fix that. So I figured, okay, I didn't need that and a few different things. So what I came up with was, let's see if we can show this guy. This guy. So on the bottom, it basically has a little piece that goes up and it goes like this, curvature, so the pennies can hold. And then it's got two other little pieces on the side. So the pennies can press it and get stuck. And they get stuck pretty good, so that works just fine. Ah, I forgot to have more pennies over here. So I can show it. Da -da. And so there, boom, two pennies. And they hold pretty good. So I went, okay, perfect. Let me put this all in one thing uh, with at least four so that I can stack them up. So I thought my vision was maybe someone might want to use this for a classroom. They could print a bunch out, and then they could hand these out to the kids. So, as a first, the next big test was this guy. So I put four of those in there, but I also reversed them on one side so that you could, you know, make the circuit and go that way. Uh, and then I put, you know, zinc and copper where the zinc and copper are, and plus and minus the sign. You know, the plot positives is the penny, and so I thought, oh, that works pretty good. And the next step. I want to put some more designs in there, so I put my little symbol in there, and I tried to put a lemon in the middle, and it didn't come out very well. And plus, the minus signs, after I looked at them, were a little bit small. For my last and final ones, I fixed that lemon, so now it looks more like a lemon, even printed out at 0.2 millimeters. And then I put zinc and copper everywhere, and I fixed the minus and plus buttons, and it works. And the cool th oh, another thing I added at one point. I wasn't sure, uh, see it's, all, it's recessed in the bottom so they can stack, and I was a little unsure what happens if they stack and they get a little too tight and you have to pry them out, open. So I put a little finger hold there where you could actually pull it open if you needed to. Uh, but I have all these, so here is this one, and they stack. Yeah, they stack. So I think, you know, for a whole classroom maybe you could print a bunch of these out. And they stack, and it just seems really convenient, uh, which I, I need it for my classroom. So we're teaching our kids, I think, well, I got delayed this week, so it might be another week or two before I teach them about lemon batteries, but I've got a lemon battery to use. So, okay, well, enough of that excitement. So now, let me go over the numbers. So the numbers for this guy, it took eight hours and 18 minutes to print, so kind of a long print. It took 0 0.068 cents with electricity, and it weighs 0 0.110, 0 .110 uh, kilograms, which comes out to $2.20 worth of material based on $20 per kilogram. You add that to all together, it's $2.25 to print this whole thing out. So two bucks and a quarter, roughly. Oh, and one other thing is in Prusa Control, you can uh, set a layer where you change out the filament. In fact, I should probably show that right now. Because if you're watching this video and you're curious about printing this, if you print it out all in yellow, if you print it in one color, it's fine, but you're not going to see these defined materials. And also, 
I, I did this black layer so all these lettering would show up just fine. But also, as a result, because I don't have a multicolored printer, I have to print the entire layer. So I get this black line everywhere. But I also get this black line in the containers where the lemon juice goes, and it kind of serves the purpose of a fill line. So, lucky accident. I didn't plan that, but I think it's a lucky accident. So let me open up Prusa Control and drop in my last G code. Oh, not to keycho. Ah, cancel, not G code, STL file. Boom. So you would take this, dump it in, hit generate, and I'm doing it 20% in fill, 0.2 millimeters per layer. It's no problem. It can be, a, it, it works great. Uh, and then after this generates, there we go. So what I would suggest doing is you go up here and go to the layer right there where you first see the lettering. At that layer, you want it to go back to yellow. So you hit that. And then I like doing, and it's like that go down two layers. I kind of like doing two layers now to get that color nice and hit that and then save that off because now it'll go through yellow, yellow, yellow. It'll ask for the change, change it to black, and then it'll do two layers, then ask for change again and go back to yellow and then you get nice results like this. So I am pretty happy. So this is a challenge to myself and not my, my wife's not here, but she's liking it too. But I, I am stoked about the results. This is pretty cool. So lastly, I'm going to go plug it all in and prove that it actually works. Okay, so here it is. I got it all plugged together. And so the idea is, well, if you have an LED, so you have the long edge of an LED plugged in to the positive. The positive is the copper. And so this is the battery. This is one battery. So that to this, there's only one volt. So I have that in series to the next one, copper, zinc, and around here, that's why I reversed them, because zinc goes to copper again, another battery, another battery, and finally you come out, and at the end we should have four volts. So if I check anything right now, let me get this on, or zero, so if I touch these two, I should get nothing, because nothing's in there yet. But if I take some lemon juice, which I got at the store, and this is just generic lemon juice, There you go. Kind of overfilled that one. Now, only that one's going, so if I hit here, I should have about, here you go, 0 0.97 volts. Hooray. So now I will fill up the rest. And this is not a lesson plan on how this works, or the chemical reaction, I'm not doing that. This is just how how you get this just to physically work. How do you use this? And in your own class, you can teach all the particulars. So now if I go across two batteries, I should get about two volts. Yeah. Go over this one, I should get about three. And go over this one, I should get about almost four. And so that should be enough to light up my LED. So let's see, the moment of truth, right? You ready? Boom. <laughs> it works. Cool. Okay, well this is really fun. This is a fun thing to do and I hope someone out here find, finds this manipulative fun and easy to use and I hope someone uses it in their classroom. I know I am. I think it's really cool. I'm, I'm stoked. This is one reason to use 3D printing in homeschool. You can hopefully find more things like this on Thingiverse or also if you can't, you can make them yourself for the classroom and this is I, I couldn't find anything remotely like this. So, cool. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.